Buster, Buster Ryan. I need to get that lady from. Hey, it's your girl. I know that lady from the um, the it's me. I'm, I know we're on Jay, but the lady from the um the biker cipher. She was uh, older. She was probably in her seventies, and she was getting down with it, and she rapped. You when remember I was her? There? Yeah, yes. I think so. Oh God! They're all she can flow, and I was like, I need to get her in on the radio show. Right? Yeah, right. she was grooving and moving and grooving right. that whole time. Am I looking here? You're or? gonna look there. Okay. Um, well, you can look at any camera, but that's the that's the your shot is up there, which is this main camera okay. here. It's your girl Mick Yee, 360 Radio, Connected Radio, the Yee area. We are here, beautiful Monday night. We're in the capital, Sacramento, California. Somehow the death heat has crept back on us again. I I thought it was over, but it came back this week. So it's hot again. It's like supposed to be soup timber. Mm. What the fuck is going on, right? Mm. Um, tonight we have some seriously dope interviews. I've got, um, we're going to talk to Alita. She's here with us first. And then we also have Devin, which is Jones in Space. He will be second. And then LOE Gino is coming from Berkeley. So he'll be here about 8 45, 8 30. So keep your ears to the speakers. We are only live on my IG because we have been pre recording these so we can edit them and make them look all crispy. So if people are saying we're not on, that's why. I tell them to go to the lives, the Instagram lives. So, Alita, let's introduce you for those people out there who don't know. Who are you and where are you from? All right. My name is Alita Turner. I am actually grew up in Seaside, California. Hey, Seaside. I've been to plenty of shows out there. Have you? See? Yeah. A yeah. lot of people I always have to say Monterey. I oh, yeah, because it's I don't either. I th When I hear 831, I think Seaside. We well, used to be 408. Oh, really? Like, when I was growing up, it was 408. So they turn to 831. Um, I am right now I'm currently a real estate agent um, and entrepreneur, boss lady. Boss I, lady Alita. I do trading. I do you name it. I do it. You know, I try to teach people how to get money and be wealthy and everything. Well, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk. She, she go. Hey, what up? Gary Archer talking with Gary. OC. Oh, yeah. my God. OK. Yeah. Alita is in the building. So hey, Gary. <laughs> we really brought you here, even though you're a phenomenal real estate agent and boss lady and you're giving up the game and I'm ready to get in on that class. Trust me. I would love to tell the people about your history in hip hop because that kind of sparked our relationship in the right. first place. So um, this building means some things to you, you know, because mm -hmm. you've been here and done this job in a different capacity. So how did you get involved in your side of radio? How did that start? For well, you? actually, it wasn't radio. Well, um, audio video, right? It, yeah. Um, Jacqueline Moore had Sacktown Raps. Okay. It, it was on Access Sacramento back in the days. And um, then she changed the name to Nothing But Funk. Um, I saw, you know, back in the days we had the box, remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do, you know? yeah. And we used to run up our bills and stuff. Yeah, order picking the, songs off yeah, the box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but I, somehow I got tuned in to her on Access Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So she put that she was looking for help, and I gave her a call. She actually hit me back. Let's go. Yeah, so I became an intern with her. Um, man, Gary Gary will remember all this stuff. Like, remember the awards they used to have in San Francisco? I remember oh, bar, going, uh, the Bars Award. Uh, Bay, no, Bay Area. No. What was that? Was oh, Bars God, Award? I can't think of the name. Gary, if you know it, type, type it in. Um, but back in the days, they used to have, they used to show love and stuff, mm -hmm. but I used to, I was an intern, so I remember she put me behind the camera and stuff, and there was, I forgot who was there, but there was nothing but famous people there, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know. It's like no time to be nervous. You yeah, no just time go. to be nervous and stuff, and then all of a sudden, she was like, okay, I don't want to do the show anymore. I'm going to hand it off to you. Oh, okay. I'll take it. Yeah, so I started, I changed the name from Nothing But Funk to Sacramento Funk Music Videos. And funk was your introduction to it. So you're a fan of the funk era, yes? Like, Well, I just took Nothing But Funk and just changed it. I just, I wanted to represent Sac. Right. So, so that's, you added the name of the city. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I added Sacramento Funk. I see my that. Fir my first guest was Mr. Doctor. From, oh, man. From, that was my first 20 guest. 24 Block. <laughs> yeah, um, from Black Market Records. Um yeah, Mr. Dots was my first guest. Shut up. You know, I have a uh, DE uh, first degree in here in like three weeks. I haven't seen him in years. Yeah, he's coming in. He actually just did an interview on me for Sacramento Rap 
sackmusic.com or sackrap.com or something to wow. that Wow, yeah, I have it. You know, a lot of people remember me from back in the day. They come up to me. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember you now mm-hmm. and stuff. So, so you started this, um, it was audio video channel, so you were able to play video and you were able to do live video? Is that what you did? No, um, I was serviced by every major record label. Oh. I was serviced by local and major. I remember... Back then, we used to have to fax our playlists. So they were coming through. Yeah. yeah. I had stacks of videos all in my garage and, you know, the VHS tapes. Right. These are VHS tapes. I remember calling Rockefeller Records and Dame Dash answering the phone. What? Shut up. His teeth, his teeth, <laughs> I, remember, bet, yeah, I bet his teeth how... stayed in on that call. Yeah. They yeah. were giving him shit because his teeth fell out. I know. The, I saw that. On the live feed. I saw that. But it's like, hey, look, we're getting older. You know, some of us, he got nice ass teeth. They just happened to be a bridge. Yeah. It, like, it happens. But I I understand why they wasn't in there a little bit more time. Me tighter. either. But I mean, he does throw his shoes away after like one wearing, so you could get some more glue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's definitely. true too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Speaking of da- um, Dane Dash, I actually met Aaliyah too. Oh man, what a dream. When I, I had just finished interviewing Kid Capri. What I- another dream. That's like um, uh, Showtime at the Apollo, like a legendary DJ. Yeah, he was so cool. He was so cool. And I was looking for me and my ex-husband at the time was the host and um we i was looking for genuine and i told genuine the story years later when i met genuine um timberland Aaliyah had saw timberland was outside and i was like oh there goes timberland you would not believe what my ex-husband said he said who is that i was like what and Timbaland heard Are you him. You high, right? Timbaland, that's when Timbaland's first was coming out, right? It, uh, because not everybody knew him. Yeah. yeah. So Timbaland had like a little attitude, but that was me. But people was like, "Why does Timbaland have that?" And I was like, "Y'all just don't know what happened before that." Right. But Aaliyah, she didn't always be behind her. Back then, I had the big old recorder. And oh the yeah, camera. all your gear. Yeah. And I was like, "Excuse me, Aaliyah," and she turned around. And I was like, you know, because it was heavy. And she came and talked to me for like five minutes, and then her dad came out and thanked me for playing her videos hmm. and, you know, and stuff like that. Such so, a beautiful soul. Yeah, so that was, I, you know, that was one of the iconic ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You sound like you got a ton of them. I mean. Yeah. Just, Mr. Fab, Gary. I think Gary had hit me up, and he, and uh, I, for, I forgot, no telling how he found me, but, um, you know, word got out, you know, when you was on the video show and stuff, mm-hmm. and that's how... You know, I always say to Turf Talk and Fab, I knew y'all when y'all was skinny. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what Like I mean? the Luthers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The big Luther, the little Luther. Yeah, but Turf is skinny again, actually. I know. I've seen him. He did He did go back. Yeah. Yes. But me and Fab, to this day, when we see each other, he's like, what's up, sis? Yeah, and He gives me love. Guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, he spit my son some game. You know, my son got the um, barbershop. Let's plug that. What's the name of barbershop? Highly recommended um, barbershop. It's in San Leandro right now. He's opened up his second one in Berkeley on the 20th. Oh, okay. So he's in the town. Okay. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He didn't want to stay in SAC. He graduated and got up out of I'm, here. I'm coming your way, sir. Son, we're coming to see you. <laughs> yeah, because he's doing ciphers there, too. I'm ready to see that. And yeah. I'll take Sack Boy with me and we'll record some. Oh, of yeah, it. most definitely. And yeah. you can come. Now, we should probably talk about what we were just discussing, which was every time you had to go somewhere like that, you did have to lug a whole bunch of gear Mm -hmm. what so tell me what you took with you like on an average day i had to take lights i had to set up the lights. tall like stand-up lights Mm -hmm. you had mics yep i had to get mics lights and the recorder recorder and rapping forte came to my house to (laughs) do an interview i love you foe we need you in here the recorder jammed the tape jammed (laughs) i've been there and uh Right when he was leaving, I got it working. I had to run outside and catch him. And he came back and did an interview. Oh, he's a pretty cool dude, too. Yeah. Yeah, Forte, yeah. Frankie was his manager at the time. So, yeah, so that that was crazy. That similar happened, something similar happened to me. My first big interview with um, California Underground Music was at Amina, and it was um, Brother Lynch Hung. Mm. And it was the week he signed to Strange Music. So it was like a big pivotal he just dropped dinner in a movie you know and i had not done a big like other than maybe juice and stalin which were who i I got into the business with bro that's the only guys i had really interviewed so i have lynch and i'm a fan like lifelong fan i know the music 
but um the internet like went out you know and i have internet signs like tattooed all over me I ironically the internet went out and i'm like we have a fucking cannibal in the next room and the bud light is running out you know like he asked for bud light so i was like we need to get this shit squared away like asap so jay synth was the shooter oh geez. and he was the co-owner of the radio station uh, so it's oh behooved him to get that shit moving you know yeah. so he figured it out he got a laptop and like live streamed it from uh, his laptop and then recorded it on the laptop. So luckily we got that done, but I feel you on the jamming oh my of God. the I'm tape. Glad I didn't have to deal with internet back and then. And we didn't have phones to do it I on. didn't have to deal with no internet back then. I had to deal with Your recorded equipment. jamming yeah. and you know stuff like that. You know, regarding this building, the story, when I, when I walk, when I drive by and walk in this building, I remember two things. Daz, I was interviewing Daz outside, right? And Bugsy, I don't know if you know. Oh, Bugsy. I remember Bugsy. Yeah, Bugsy. Mm -hmm. He was. He used to host. Yeah, he used to throw shows in, in Roseville all the time. Yeah, at the Union. Exactly. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. at, at the what the boardwalk and yeah, stuff. It was like. like a train station or something. Train yeah. club. But uh, Bugsy had brought his producer with him at the time, and uh, you know, and the producer was talking to Daz. And he was this Asian cat, right? Mm -hmm. And he kept saying the N word and stuff. I was like, Bugsy, who is that guy? What the fuck, right? I was like, girl, it was Q. Now Q made the beat. Oh, it was him? <laughs> yeah. Now Q is a beat. Me and, me and Q laugh about this oh, all the yeah, time. Oh, yeah, because you guys weren't even who you are now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We laugh about that all the time. And uh, the second story is um, Mike Jones. Bus was out there. Mm. The record label had me come out here and interview Mike Jones. I was on his bus. Mike Jones went to the back. Well, the PD, Patty, who's a you know friend of mine now, mm -hmm. she didn't like the girl who was about to host. So, so she, she called pulled the you interview. in? She pulled the interview. Mm -hmm. So the record label called and was like, you know, got to pull the interview because the PD at the station. Blah, Doesn't blah, blah. want it to happen, yeah. I was like, I can have I somebody can else. It. He could do it, you yeah. know. And they was like, you know, unfortunately, while I was driving and I got a call from the record label, there was like a leader. Mike Jones came out. It was like, where's Alita at? He wanted you to interview And he was him. like, no, you get her back here. And I met him down at P.F. Chains, gave him a mic. He did the whole show. Player. <laughs> Player. But that's how it goes down. Like, the real ones, they know and yeah. they see. And, you know, like how you were so, you know, you were ready to respect who asked you to cut out because you were, I respect you respect them, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this guy was, like, ready for his interview. So he said, fuck it, I'm going to meet you down the street. But, you know, Mike Jones was big back then. Oh, you know? absolutely. He didn't have to do all that. No. And I give him so much respect. But I was here for the locals. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I used, you remember when we used to walk up to, like, the stores, the liquor stores and stuff, they used to be out there with their little CDs mm -hmm. trying to sell them? Mm -hmm. I used to be like, I'm not going to buy it, but I'll put you on TV. Yeah, there you go. And that's what I did, you know. And I didn't charge them. I never charged an artist to come up. That's if wonderful. If I didn't charge... If I didn't charge the big time, why am I gonna charge the local? Right, right. You know, so that's just you know the way I was yeah. and stuff, and um, that's how I became good friends with Hitworks and um, oh yeah, you know Lynch, you know all them. Oh god, Lynch, you know they they was on my show a few times. Tall Can, shout out to Tall Love Can, Tall Can. Yeah. you know um, Zig, you know Zigzag back in the days and everything. Um, Gangster Dre. Yeah, I have not interviewed Dre yet, but I've heard stories, and I would love to meet him. Is he so. still in town? I don't know. Okay, I have to. If see. he is, I would love to meet him. Yeah, and then you know, um, JD, he's like Alita. You got Mozzie. I said, what do you mean I got Mozzie? He was like, when you was interviewing us, Mozzie was little Tim. I said, what? Yeah, he was. <laughs> so it's crazy. I got VHS taste. Me and Soup was just talk DJ Soup was just talking. He was like Alita. You you got so much history. Right. You need to put that in a doc. I know. Sue's like, before something happens, you never know. Just you put know. it all in a doc. Yeah, I just got to find somebody to transfer it from VHS. You know, me sit there and kind of go through everything, you know, and stuff. But and then to be one of the first ones to interview a lot of people, like Keisha Cole when she first came out. Oh, yeah. She's amazing. I was driving up 16th Street, and MSA Records called me. They was like, hey, you know, wonder if you could interview. She's from your area. See, they think... 
everything's from my area. Because you're in Cali? Yeah. Yeah, so it's all close together. Yeah, you know, so. How does it feel to have record labels like that calling your phone to book you? You know, like that. Oh, God. Has to be a bit an ego push for me. I would be so proud. You know? Oh, God. You know, we can't get friends with a lot of the record labels. I don't there. even meet them anymore. You know, unless they come with their artist. I don't even. I rarely get a chance to meet the record label. Yeah, it's not. It's not the same. It's not, and that's one of the reasons why I quit the show. Yeah, you know what I mean. I have thought about. I've done some like going live on Zoom on Facebook and stuff like with Big O Measy. Shout out to my bro Big Much O Measy. Love Big O, yeah. the, the great communicator. Yes, and I got a shout out to the Sick Witted family and stuff too. Forty Absolutely. mugs. Yeah, I love Muggsy. Shot. Love uh, oh, shot. and sugar, 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 sugar tea. <laughs> shot you know. just put an album out. Just came out Friday. I saw that. So bags at it. So make sure you guys go pick up his album. That should be epic. He has like features from Juvenile on there oh, and like yeah. some really big features. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about being with Mac Mall at the bars. Oh yeah. I haven't seen him since I interviewed him with Ray Love. Oh yeah, I stalk him like every month. He can't get rid of my ass. So okay. he'll be like, "What's up, ye? I'm all you know. I'm coming right." He's like, I know you, you, you come to all of them. <laughs> like, literally, the other shirt I have to put out on tonight, because I just wore this too short shirt the other night because I'm so proud of it because I got it at his show. But I brought my Mac Mall yes. illegal business shirt like to wear for Jevin's interview, actually, because I be switching shit up. You know, <laughs> I got a lot of tour T-shirts, so I'm trying to use them for something. Yeah, keep them. Keep them. I wish I would have kept my Rapping Forte jacket. Oh, man. That's probably I would love to see that. I would just love to even see a picture of that. Yeah, just moving and stuff. But no, um, no, just a lot of, you know, good history and, you know. Well, so let's ask you some of the questions I ask the, the artists because it's in the same mm -hmm. uh, sector. So um, where do you tend to watch your podcasts? Like what's some of your favorite places to go on the Internet to watch? You know, may it be inter entertainment or informational? Who do you watch? Or are you still watching like you go to TV to see what's popping or IG or what's your modality? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. When I'm at home, I don't know why I'm doing this. I've been watching the crazy shows. Makes you never want to date again. Uh, Those forensic and for my man and stuff oh, like I that. Oh, I know why. Because oh every woman over 40 watches that <laughs> shit. Because I do too. My my roommate, it puts her to sleep. It calms her down. She oh, can no. go to sleep if she has true crime on. And literally, I just dog sat for her dogs last week. And they only calm down when I put true crime on. Oh, so it runs in the family. Girl, you know? yeah. It's just crazy. But... I like Dish Nation, and I like catching, like, sh you know, your shows. Thank you. Know, I, like, you. I still like supporting the locals when I see the locals pop up. I appreciate and that. And stuff. And that's why I share. You know, it only takes a minute to Absolutely. share somebody. And you're not a hater. Yeah. So you're going to make sure other people want to, you want other people to win. E even if you're another show, share. Right. The you more know, the support. merrier. Like, that's what I'm saying. I put up a post the other day on Instagram, like, uh, Platform stars like scared to collab. Yeah, and I'm like, what's this? What are you scared of? You may gain five new people by having my audience on your page, or right. I may gain five new people by having your audience on my page, or we may not gain shit. But it's we tried. Like it's you're supposed to build together. Right. So what's the, what's the fear? I don't have no fear because there ain't nobody like me. So it's right. it's only gonna build because it's like opposite of what I'm doing. You gotta be unique. Absolutely. So um, if you had $10,000 extra right now to put on to your career, may it be real estate or um, if you were to get back into AV or, you know, funk, uh, video, television, what would you spend it on? What would you invest it on? $10,000? Mm -hmm. I would most step. Well, I have my LLC, you know, my business life. I think I would get something, you know, invest in something like this. Where I have my real estate and a podcast okay. going. I bet you money, and I, you've probably already thought of this, but I bet you could do a great real estate podcast. I bet people would listen yeah. to that. I yeah, I would like to actually kind of mix it with Combine the music it. Yep. Mm -hmm. and the you know and you know the real estate because artists need to know what to do with their money. Yep. Period. You know what I mean? They need to learn how to invest. They how to, to buy a house. They need to know how to trade. You know, put their money. You know. You know have it working for them and a lot of them don't know how to do that a lot of them that have bad credit teach them how to get credit so i I rather if i had ten thousand i would do something to incorporate everything to show people how to make money 
Oh, that's keep dope. it coming. That's a real boss, though. Because look at 40. Put other people on. Yeah. 40, look, he, he got his, well, he has a restaurant. He got his wine. I always use him. And I tell him this, too. I always mention him. He's a mogul. Yeah. yeah. And you don't hear him in no mess. Never. Mm -mm. I, I still want that E40 interview. <laughs> I have him tattooed all over me. The choices, the yep and the no. Oh, my God, you do. I do. He actually re posted that when I first got it but he might think I'm a little insane too because I have definitely been stalking him for a long time oh for God. an interview like I'll be like hey I'm here you know I'm everywhere he is but he, I'm never interviewing him so I need to get with 40 you know it's crazy I was in um, interviewing David Banner in Santa Clara oh I love David and Banner. that's why I met Keek right and and 40 was supposed to, 40 was texting me. He's like, where you at? I said, I'm at the hotel because I used to go post up at the hotel in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Oh, to That's how I met Don people. Juan. Mm -hmm. That's why I ran into, because um, I interviewed Snoop's dad in Superfly. That's smart, though. Yeah, I used to post, be right there. Because you I, know everybody's coming through there. Yeah, everybody came through. I said, and I used to have this thing. I said, hey, on the video show. It's like, oh, okay, you know. So they're down for that. Yeah, like, I met Lady of Rage, Corrupt everybody that shit is dope yeah i really think you should get back into it in some capacity. everybody do i do even if it's uh altered or different and if you need help i'll help you you know like you want to do a collab show here once a week let's do it let's go and i'll do it with you yeah. you know like that's yeah, what this is cool. for so we'll definitely have to talk about it for and sure I, and i have to give a shout out to um mike mosley yeah i never met mike but i've oh, heard really? great things about him okay we're going to have to get him up in here. Absolutely. You know, he's he's here a lot. I do. Okay. I know. He's right around me, and that's just it. Like, I know he's been, like, out here forever. That's when he did his a lot of music was in sack, Mike Mosley. He's just so legendary. It's all the sounds of my youth. He's quiet, so you don't know he's in the really in the room unless you, oh, you know. Oh, yeah, you, you wouldn't unless you know him. And Rick Rock. I love Rick. I, I did interview Rocket. I met him when he was Cosmic Slop Shop. Oh, really? Yeah, that with Big Lurch? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Lurch is a <laughs> so rapper funny. that went to jail when he um, allegedly you ever heard of him? ate I've some heard. PCP or smoked some PCP, and he ate his girlfriend, like, what? literally yeah. ate her. Yeah. So and that's Dooney. allegedly. I wasn't there, so mm, the, yeah. he's in jail for it. And he's hit me up a couple times because he wants a phone Dude, interview. You know what? Somebody else of his camp had hit me up, too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't do the show no more, you know, and stuff. But, <laughs> you uh, need to, or you can <laughs> forward them to me. We'll tell the story. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, everybody always wants me to do the fucking controversial, like, sock it to me questions. But I'm never doing, I'm never going to do that. I would never, yeah. I will never have, I never will. I just play music. I'm positive. I like to build positive uh, images. We talk about what you got going on in the future what you influence you but we're not doing all that controversial shit take that to rap shack i'm i'm not them so that's a good thing like i like the, mm. the i like that there's different places for different things there's different shows out here for different things shadow has on the real you know like i think yeah. he bought that right from you well, or he took I it over passed the torch to him and everything so, so. he's he does uh, hype radio mm -hmm. he was also my program director at um giants and elephants for quite a while so mm. that's how i know shadow was shadow was juice's cousin so that was how i was oh, able yeah. to get to know him he was like my program director i used to stress him out i met shadow outside 103.5 and if you look at our interview i did at hype radio we, we talked about how I just walked up to him. I <laughs> <laughs> you know? And he's huge for people yeah, who and don't know. Yeah, he's called Shadow for a reason. He's huge as fuck, right? He's Very. like, you ain't scared of nobody. <laughs> right, I'm not. You're right. I'm not. So, <laughs> What was I going to ask you next? Uh, 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 uh. What is your process? Okay, so when it came to putting a show together or doing interviews um for your show when you did do it did you have like a creative process beforehand did you study the person did you do research did you just go in and ask them and get to know them on the spot like what was your what was your procedure you know it was so different back then um most of them were people that i, w I was playing their videos already you know what i mean and so you were already familiar with them yeah the only thing one time um, on Watt Avenue, I made a U-turn because I saw 103.5 out there, and D-Lo was out there. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, he goes, Alita, this is Universal Records. He got some artists. Girl, it was an Akon and them out there. Oh. And the, the guy from Universal Records was like, can you get the camera? And I was like, well, let me try. So I went and got the camera, and I met them at the Marriott by UC Davis, mm -hmm. right? And some girl that never came out with Eminem was there. Akon was there. And um, the, this guy went by, like, something dog or something like that. And... um and um what's the what's the guy's i can't think of his name the one that screams all the time what's his name oh mystical yeah his manager okay. with charles shout out to charles you know he was there and stuff but i wind up interviewing akon and a few Shit. of the other artists but i used to just let you know that my host used to ask questions you know kind of like you're doing right you know what i mean sometimes it's just off the top of your head you know hey tell us about you then you kind of go sometimes, from there yeah it's scripted you know but like most that. of the people like life you know, I interview like Common, Life Jennings, and stuff like that, which we already knew who they were. Yeah, you kind of already have the script in your head mm -hmm. because you know them. So, yeah. super smart. Um, and sometimes I'll ask them before I turn the camera in between takes or before, is there anything you want to talk about or don't want to talk that's about? That's a good thing to do, too. Yeah. I have learned to do that is like ask people, is there anything you don't want to talk about? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, that way you don't really get into all those weird situations. Yeah. Um, how do people get to you if they want to? either hire you for obviously it's real estate right now mm -hmm. um, but if anybody was interested in maybe booking you for an interview or consultation how do people find you well first of all check out the youtube you can look me up on youtube yeah let's too. let them know all um, the sites and that way the one where um got a shout out to my boy nico okay nico nico vision right mm -hmm. um look you know support his youtube channel support hype radio youtube channel and um we love Nico hype. came. I used to interview Nico when he was in a group unknown. Okay. He came. He came to my house. He did my first interview. He's kind of the one that started kicking this off, and then Shadow and stuff, because I call him Top Mess of Shadow, right? Okay. And um, so if you look me up, Alita A L I T A, last name Turner T U R N E R, you'll see the YouTube um, interviews with um, Shadow, but the one with Nico. I get. I just gave him a few VHS tapes. It has some good footage, like with Keisha Cole. Mr. Oh. Even had Mr. Doctor, my first interview oh. clip. You'll see the record, my record plats from Priority Records, rap a lot. You know, so the tables were turned. He came and interviewed me. So what a what, what a blessing. That's the hit. If you want to hear the whole history, that's the one. And mm -hmm. he had me talk about my childhood things I did that nobody really knew, and right, you know, and stuff like that. And then you know, with the hype radio with Shadow, you know, his YouTube channel. But uh, me, you could really Google me, Alita Turner. I did do that today, and you can. Yeah, you come with up. real estate and. What I hope it was a lot of good no, stuff. No, it was. It was I Sacramento <laughs> Funk and it was. Oh, what did it Sacramento yeah. Funk come mm -hmm. up? Oh, okay. Yeah. It sure did. But um, you know, nine one six two three nine five five zero four and um Boss Lady Lita Alita on Instagram. Mm hmm And I think She does share a lot too. She shares a lot of events. Um, I try to start off the morning positive. She's definitely a positive influence. She will be at the bars up, which is the twenty first of September. Mm -hmm. It's young bosses. This is our fourth annual event. Uh, Mac Mall is the headliner as well. We have like 15 cypher contestants and a domino competition. There's 350 on the table for the dominoes. There's mm. 500 on the table for the cypher. There's, um, it's just a lot of shit. Good food, good, um, at, like in the middle we have people perform so it's just super dope come on out to oak park brewery 21st of september that's the new that's the bit the next date and then the 28th i'm at the all things indie showcase which it's our oh, 14 yes. year Shout anniversary to my sis Elisa. yes she, that's yeah. 14 years she's been doing that god speaking of oak park brewery i was last the first time i went the only time i was there was with money b for did john oh, yeah i love money that was I was like, oh, this place is cool. Yeah. I was like, Every time mine comes, him and Numbskull and all them, they, they used to always make sure I had tickets, make sure I was there. And, right. You know, so shout out to Money B for still holding it down. Absolutely. Digital Underground. You, that music would never die. Legendary. Yeah, that was like my first hip-hop concert was a Digital Underground show. And I remember asking somebody... When am I going to meet Shock G? And they're like, he is Shock G. Humpty Hump <laughs> is Shock G. And I was like, what? You know, like he, I didn't, I couldn't comprehend that he wore a nose. So yeah, it's crazy. But now I totally get that. I totally get it. You know, I've been there and done that. But, but I want to give props to you too for thank you 
I know what it's like being a female in this industry, you know, because there were times because I was a camera person, people would go to my host, mm -hmm. and the host would be like, the boss is behind the right, camera. And I'd just be like, oh, so you're just going to walk right past me. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, shout out to you. Keep doing what you're doing, you know. Thank and, you. And, um, you know, we most definitely will have, you know, conversation, you know, later on and everything about, you never know. He, he, I, I may, I was behind the camera. Maybe I'd be in front of the camera. Yeah, we could definitely use some more experienced talent on the hosting side. So you're welcome to come anytime. Um, all my my one of them got married and had a baby, so he's off doing his thing. I, which I love you, Tap. Congratulations. But I miss you as a co-host. And that ain't gonna happen with me. Co right. I'm not either. Concrete <laughs> is he's off doing his own. He's at Empire doing something. Um, Quincy's like one of the biggest uh, like after hours party promoters in the city so he's always tired anyway so I'm like you need to get your ass back out there to those parties so we just been kind of manning it just my big ass mouth for a little while you know but you've been on tour yeah I, I do try to go to several shows a, a weekend no you've been on tour you've been everywhere <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's the biggest part of booking interviews and knowing artists is you have to get out and f like see other cities and meet, talk to people like that's just how I feel like is genuine or else you really aren't you don't know what's really going on out there you can say you're watching it but I'm in it. Like, I walk up in it. So I like to show up places. I don't go much further than, like, Bakersfield, though. I haven't been to L.A. in a while. Oh, okay. okay. Maybe a couple months. Um, and then can I kind of um, say something else? Um, my two-year-old nephew was the one that was um, abused by the mother's new boyfriend. Uh-huh. So um, just want to say justice for famous, you know, uh, my brother, my bro, Toby, you know, he has intellect records, too. But, you know, keep him in prayer. You know, Justice Famous, Famous is doing better. You know, Good. he had old and new injuries. And, you know, he's bleeding. Wow. Behind the, you know, women, watch who you guys get with. Just don't let anybody in. You know, don't leave your kids with anybody. I'm <laughs> saying, man, it's true. You know, so Justice for Famous, you know, they do have a GoFundMe. Hit me up if you guys are interested, you know, donating and stuff like that. So. <laughs> We'll definitely get that information too, so I can put it in the in the interview clip. <coughs> so this will be out in about a week to ten days, um, and we'll take some pictures in front of that logo as well as he'll take some pictures of you solo. Okay. And then Devin is up next, but I want to make sure you you get to you plugged everything you need to plug anything shows people uh, projects uh, the barbershop we talked about the show we talked about. Yeah. There's um, just so much. There yeah. is. As I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about getting shout out to Luna Sick. And everybody. Shorty, everybody that used to be in this building. Yeah, and it's hard when you, <laughs> it's time for you to do it, and it's like you don't have very much time. So yeah. I get that. That's why you can come back and be a co-host, and you can say whatever you want that, huh? anytime. He's like, yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Devin like knows. got good history. Got a lot of history. <laughs> yeah, this is um, this has definitely been a great uh, yeah. meeting of the minds, and I would love to continue it. So, th uh, those of you out there who are interested in, in learning about the history of Sacramento, like the hip hop, the video show where she was able to display all these artists' videos, make sure you tap in with Alita. We're gonna, I've encouraged her. She's gonna write that book, right? that book right yeah, yeah, you're gonna yeah, write that yeah. book yeah. i know about about the book and then she's gonna come in here and co-host and we're gonna collab on events and we're gonna help all these artists out here so make sure you follow her um she's very similar to like a, a wendy day type of asset and she's right here in your no wendy oh my backyard gosh. like i love wendy you probably still have all the, the phone numbers and emails from the record labels i'm sure you didn't just scrap all that shit oh no. you know i still some of the people are still my face they're your friends, friends. Yeah, yeah i'm sure people don't know so you yeah you need to we we need to try to nurture those relationships just because you still have them so might as well right yeah might help definitely. somebody so it's great to have you i'm honored to have you step in the building here as our guest um you know this is definitely uh the very beginning that was eddie z that was just in here that's him right there on that sticker um the other dj so he's justin's brother and then um, we have 916 Sackboy on the camera, so he took some good pictures of us in video while we did the interview, and then we'll take some Make pictures sure in front of that. 
<laughs> he does a great job. <laughs> he does it. He knows the, he knows what to do. Um, and then I'm gonna have you sign somewhere on the, somewhere in here where you can figure it out where there's room. But um, much love, y'all. Alita Turner, right. boss lady Alita's in the building. Um, now she's knows where we're at, so she'll I be back. And uh, make sure you go support. Uh, t tune into what she's currently doing if you need to purchase any land.